what's up everyone? Tetrick85 here, and welcome to my Juventus career mode for FIFA 19. And this was the big team that I was talking about even before my Lobos one, whenever I was ending my Zaragoza career mode, and I said one of my many career modes that I was going to do in FIFA 19 was a big team, and Juventus is it. And the biggest reason why I want to do Juventus career mode is because they are not going to be in FIFA 20, so to speak. They are, but they're not. They're, they're not going to be there by name. Because in FIFA 20, because EA lost the rights to use their crest and their stadium and their name, in FIFA 20, they're going to be known as Piemonte Cal Calcio. With, and if you guys have seen footage of Piemonte Calcio... Their kits look nothing like Juventus, so I'm. I think it's a safe uh, bet to say that any Juventus fans that play FIFA are not gonna like playing as Piemonte Calcio. But anyway, I figured uh, I might as well play as this team. This is gonna be the last time we get to see them in FIFA. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. <laughs> I'm sorry. Again, it never seems like I burp until I go. It's time for me to record, but. Um, yeah, I'll give you guys a little bit of background what's going on here. Let me just go into my photos here. And this is my Juventus team to start out with. And you can see a bunch of new faces there. Um, John Luigi Buffon, club legend, he's come back after spending a year at PSG. Uh, Danilo, who ended up coming in from Manchester City for a swap for uh, Jao Cancelo, which... Jao Cancelo in this game is 83, ranked 83. And from a FIFA point of view, going from Jao Cancelo to Danilo is a drastic down, uh, downgrade. And that's just a really weird move. So far in real life, it really hasn't been that bad for both teams. But yeah, from a FIFA sense, that move just does not make sense. And you can see the... Um, the two free, uh, free signings, Adrian Rabio and Aaron Ramsey, I have in the midfield. And you can see the front three of Ronaldo, Mandzukic, and Dabala, which... There were two things about this particular um, starting 11 that worried me. The first one was Paulo Dabala being as a right wing. He's much better suited as a cam, which cam is his natural position. And that is the position I played uh, him on when I had him on my 1860 Munich career mode that I played off camera. And this guy is such a weapon in, in career mode. I absolutely love playing as, uh, with Paulo Dybala. And I'm not comfortable having Aaron Ramsey being a starting uh, cam. So what I'm going to end up doing is putting Dybala in, in where Ramsey is. Moving Ramsey to where Pjanic is having uh, Pjanic on the bench, well, I'm probably going to have Doug Douglas Costa on there, so... But yeah, you can see, uh, here's what my substitutes look like, uh, Chesney, Decilio, Delict, De uh, Chan, Bernadeschi, Costa, and Higuain. And then my reserves are Cuadrado, and you get Rugani, Matuidi, Kadira, Betancourt, Perrin. Uh, guys like that, but, um, and I actually thought about it because Juve is in the Champions League once again, that should be a given considering they won the Serie A title. I was going to have where I was going to have the Champions League groups, how they are going to be this season, but I thought about it, I'm like, considering this is only going to be a season-long career mode, I decided to randomize the groups and the Champions League, and this is what I came up with. And you can see I'm in Group G alongside Liverpool, Bashak Shahir, and Club Bruges, which myself and Liverpool should make it out of that group. Though Club Bruges, they're a much better team than what people give them credit for, especially on FIFA 19. So I think they're actually going to move it above Bashak Shahir. And it's nice seeing Newcastle in there. They're in Group D alongside Napoli, Celtic, and Porto. Though, to be honest with you, I expect Napoli and Porto to advance. Though, I do hope Newcastle finish at least third. They should. I feel they should finish above Celtic. And uh, uh, Wolves is in Group H. Uh, group B, you have Man City, Bayern, Atla At Atalanta, and Valencia. That should be an interesting one. Barcelona got a pretty a pretty easy draw. Um, Real Madrid and Dortmund are once again battling out. But alongside Benfica, that's got to be a hard group. 
Uh, Group F is no joke either. Leipzig, Atletico, uh, PSG. But yeah, those are my Champions League groups. And take a look at my starting budget here. Not quite as high as what I thought it would be. I would have thought it would have been at least $100 million, but it's uh, $97 million with a wage budget of three hundred and twenty-five grand. And, um, I gotta level with you guys. I did do a financial takeover of this club, but that is, I only did it for one reason and one reason only, and that is I tried my best to get Kylian Mbappe, which I ended up bringing $136.5 million in, and I, I tried my hardest to bring in Kylian Mbappe, but unfortunately PSG was unwilling to let him go. Because I've noticed in the Switch version of this game, even if a player recently moves to a club, if you offer him enough money, you can coax him to join your team. But in this instance, with Kylian Mbappe, they absolutely refuse saying that he just recently moved there and won't move again. That's basically what you see in the PlayStation version. But, um, yeah, um, speaking of my uh, uh, transfers, I'll get to that here in a minute. Though I do want to show you my squad. And you can see there, I did move Dybala to a center attacking mid spot. Ramsey took Pjanic's spot. Um, De Ligt has got to be partnering Virgil van Dijk, which is one of the transfers that I made in this uh, career mode so far. And I decided to swap Ronaldo to a right winger instead of a left winger since he's right footed. And I moved Douglas Costa to the left because he's left footed. And this is going to be Higuain's last game because... He's actually got to be leaving the club here, which, again, I'll be getting the chances here pretty soon. And take a look at my bench, Perrin and, uh, as my backup goalkeeper. I actually do not have a decent backup wide back, which I'm going to be in the market for that. But you can see Rugani, Chan, Pjanic, Benedeschi, Quadrado. And I got the Portuguese wonder kid himself, the next Cristiano Ronaldo, Jao Felix on my bench, the center four, uh, 77 rated. You guys who watch my Zero Goes at Career Mode knows just how good this kid is. He's got to be a fantastic backup for me. And I thought it would be cool to have Jao Felix and Cristiano Ronaldo on the same team. And you can see, I don't have a whole lot of reserves, so I'm going to... Hopefully. Actually, no. Come to think of it, I don't. Because, let's look here. Look at how many of these players that I loaned out, that are loaned out on my team. You get Maroon, my center back, 73 rated. Mancuso, my right winger, 71 rated. Piazza, uh, 76 rated. Left winger is loaned out. 73 rated right winger, Orsolini. 70 rated Rogerio, my left midfielder. So, if I end up getting an injury crisis, there's pretty much people, pretty many people that I can call on from loan if need be. Even though my squad is kind of thin, I can always recall someone to fill in just in case somebody gets injured. But, uh, let's get into the transfer history here. Um... Let's start from the beginning. Jao Felix, I ended up getting him from Benfica for $24 million, Which I think is cheaper than what I got him in my uh, Zaragoza career mode. I think I paid $25 or $26 million for him in that particular career mode. Um, Blaise Matuidi, I ended up selling to Man City for $23.5 million. Uh, Decilio, I ended up selling to Ajax for $7.5 million. Kadira went to Chelsea for $23. Chiellini went to Barcelona for $32. And Mario Mandzukic went to Spurs with 26 million. Just give us some of the older players I know whose overalls are going to start dropping like a rock throughout the season, so I might as well bring in some extra cash too, like for instance, Virgil van Dijk I ended up getting for 91.5 million. He's 88 rated and I feel he's worth that price. This guy's absolutely fantastic in career mode. And this is a bit of a controversial move, but considering I got Buffon in the team and I got Perrin as a decent backup, I decided to sell Wojciech Chesney to Watford for $46.5 million just to bring a little bit extra cash. But, um, but yeah, that's my transfer activity. I'm going to show you some ongoing stuff, which I did mention at Higuain. I did accept an offer for Barcelona for uh, $53 million, which I'm going to take because he's going to start... 
uh, dropping an overall. Now, as you can see here, I'm planning on bringing in Frankie Dion, who plays for Barcelona in real life, but I'm planning on bringing him in, having him as a, as a decent backup center mid. And to replace Higuain, I'm torn between Aguero, Aguero and Firmino. Now, if I was playing in a normal career mode, the smart choice would be Firmino because he's four years younger than Sergio Aguero. He's three overall uh, lower than he is, but he does have room to grow considering he is only 26 years of age. And I feel he's going to be getting close to 90 uh, within the next three or four seasons. But considering this is the only season I'm going to do in this career mode and I want to have the best chance of winning a bunch of silverware now, I'm pretty sure I'm going to go in for Sergio Aguero, which I already submitted a, a transfer fee for him. So, yeah, it looks like I'm going to be bringing in Sergio Aguero alongside Frankie De Jong. And, um, and like I said earlier, I'm going to be in the market for a for some backup wide backs, preferably a new left back, a uh, backup left back and a backup right back because I, I really don't have... My only backup wide back is 62 rated, which is nowhere near good enough for this Juventus team, but yeah, um, let's take a look at objectives here real quick. And they want me to win the Domestic Cup, which is a Copa Italia, and they also want me to, uh, to win the league, which they've done it the past seven or eight years, so that should be attainable. And, uh, they haven't given me my Champions League objective yet, but, um... Yeah, they're, they're probably going to want me to finish at least the semifinals in that particular tournament. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what all comes out of that. But, um, yeah, I think that's pretty much all I want to talk about in this video. I think I pretty much covered all my bases. Yeah, I don't think there's really anything to talk about. But, uh, next video I will be playing this uh, Italian Super Cup game against AC Milan. Because I do want to play at least one game with this Juventus side. Just in case, which, before I end this video, I should say that, with the exception of this Italian Super Cup game, I am going to be simulating every single game, except if we do get to the Champions League final, which I will end up playing that one myself, which I sound like Jared HD there, but... <laughs> But yeah, I'll be simulating through the entire season, but I do want to at least play one game with this um, Juventus team. And I'm looking at that the series may be either five or six episodes long. I think I'm leaning towards five, because I do want this career mode to go along, go along at a decent pace. But um, yeah, next time I'll see you, I'll be playing this uh, Super Cup game against AC Milan. So, But thank you guys so much for watching this. Hope you guys are going to enjoy the series as much as I am going to be playing it. And I will see you guys again next time.